So in the last video, we looked at some of the terminology in Weibull, talking about spectral sequence convergence. And this time I want to mainly focus on Boardman, introduce some of the basics of the terminology and compare that with what we saw. So where were we last time? Well, we said that a spectral sequence weakly converges to some cohomology groups. And remember, I'm being sort of agnostic about the spectral sequence, um, but that's fine. And I guess I'm indexing things cohomologically for now. Um, so if each HN uh, has a filtration, And now this didn't need to be a finite filtration. So we've got zero sits inside, but then who knows how many terms, but we'll index it so that FP plus one sits inside the P filtration and so on. And this filters HN. And for the spectral sequence uh, to weakly converge, we also needed to identify isomorphisms with our E infinity terms. So these are somehow identified with our filtration quotients. Okay, and then uh, to actually say that it converged, there were a couple kind of issues to, to deal with, and I'm gonna investigate those a little bit more now and see why those were coming up. So the first couple are not a big deal. Um, if HN is not the union of all these filtered pieces, well then of course we can't recover HN from the filtration quotients. Okay, so that one I think is kind of obvious. Uh, we had this, um, this other possible issue that if we have some other filtration of the same group, say we define F bar, so FP bar of HN is gonna be <clears throat> defined to be FPHN from our old filtration directs some, some other R module. Um, so maybe these are abelian groups or R modules, whatever. I want to put that same group everywhere so that uh, FP plus first filtration from this new filtration, same deal, I'll take the old filtration and then tack on this R module A, and so on. Do this in all the spots. Well, then of course, if I look at the filtration quotients, <clears throat> sorry, got something stuck in my throat apparently. Uh, so I look at these filtration quotients and the A will kill the A, and so it's exactly the same as my old filtration quotients. So of course, I'm not gonna learn anything uh, about these extra summands. So maybe I'll say we can never recover A from the filtration quotients. So remember when we're talking about convergence, there are these issues of how do we identify the E infinity term and we wanted things to be regular so that we could see nice stuff there. <clears throat> or at least nice-ish. And in particular, we got that if we were bounded below or even better bounded. And uh, then there's also this issue of reconstructing the cohomology. And so this is saying, well, yeah, okay, if you knew the filtration quotients and the filtration did not, uh, if, if you took the co-limit and you didn't get the thing that you were interested in, 
then you're never going to get it back from these filtration quotients. And the second one is saying, yeah, if there are extra sort of direct subends in each spot, then we're never going to be able to recover those either from the filtration quotients. Okay, so we want to rule those out. So we'll say some things about filtrations that are nice and basically just try to put ourselves in the nicest cases whenever we can. So let's say the filtration, <clears throat> I'm just going to use the same kind of notation because this is the situation we're interested in, but of course I could filter any R module, doesn't really matter. Okay, but let's say we have this sort of filtration. <clears throat> well then, uh, this is called exhaustive. You'll see this in Weibull too, by the way. Um, if, though I think Weibull maybe says it for chain complexes. Anyway, uh, we want to rule out this first weird issue. So let's just say, uh, yeah, it should have been exhaustive. When you take the union in of all the pieces, you get the thing that we were interested in. Okay, great. Um, it's called Hausdorff. If we look at the intersection of all the filtered pieces, and that should be zero. So remember these two, uh, these two both came up in our definition of convergence for rival. Okay, uh, so we saw these sorts of pieces and now we're just naming those conditions. And uh, having this intersection be zero rules out this A direct sum in that's floating around in this weird example. Okay, then the last one is gonna take a little bit more explaining, but we could also call a filtration complete. And we'll call it complete if HN is actually the inverse limit of HN mod the filtered pieces. Okay, so this is the inverse limit over P. Just There's an N floating around. <clears throat> Let me say that uh, one thing that we'll want to do, kind of looking ahead, is we'll want to talk about convergence of spectral sequences under some conditions, and most of the time you want to put yourself in the nicest situation, and then we'll talk about how to relax the conditions and whatnot, but essentially you always want to have this exhaustive condition. You shouldn't be filtering something badly. You should always have an exhaustive filtration. But in the other situations, maybe maybe we can generalize a little bit. Um, okay, I, I also should say I'm sort of being lazy here, so I think Boardman actually says something about Cauchy sequences and gives the topology to your filtration, and then uh, complete is, is really a, a special setting, but this is essentially what we're going to need. So I, I'm being a little bit loose with his definition. All right, so what did... Why we'll say in this terminology, well, there we saw that if a spectral sequence has, so we've identified those E infinity terms with filtration quotients for some filtration. <clears throat> Sorry, still, something's still bothering me. Uh, if the spectral sequence has this identification, it's a regular spectral sequence. So that told us something about the stability of the E infinity term in the sense that uh, eventually at any spot ER surjects onto ER plus one and so on. Okay. Um, so we wanted it to be regular. And uh, if the filtration satisfies, well, really all three of these, So it's exhaustive, it's Hausdorff, and it's complete. <clears throat> then the spectral sequence converges, and this was his definition, to the cohomology, H star. Or we could say to Hn at, at any given spot. Um, okay, so now we want to sort of investigate this condition C. I think A and B are, are sort of fairly easy to see. Why do we want this inverse limit condition? What is this all about? Well, let's go back to the example that we were looking at long ago, which is the cohomology of a filtered space. So I've got some space. And 
and maybe this isn't a finite filtration, but remember a CW complex is given the topology where this is the co-limit over uh, these, these pieces. So X really is the co-limit here. And then when I take homology, well, homology of X, really there's, uh, it's gonna be isomorphic to the co-limit of the homology of the pieces. It's unreadable. So this is true for any cellular filtration or also for the, the CW filtration. Really there's a map from the co-limit to the homology and that um, is an isomorphism. But if we look at co-homology, well, now all the arrows are going to reverse, right? And so there's a map to the inverse limit rather than the co-limit. But the problem is that in cohomology, this in general could not be an isomorphism, especially when you consider uh, other kinds of cohomology theories, not just singular cohomology. Okay, so in our in our spectral sequence, when we were talking about convergence, uh, where we had a finite filtration, remember that we had this, this piece that we identified and showed was isomorphic to our E infinity terms. We called it HN of XP infinity. And part of the argument was to show that that's isomorphic to EPQ infinity. And that HN, I'm not gonna be able to fit it there, that HN of XP infinity was defined to be all the things in the cohomology of this finite stage XP where we said X lifts to the cohomology of X. But what we really were trying to do is lift it up the diagram. So what we really should write here for a not finite filtration is that this lifts arbitrarily, if you can read that, arbitrarily, far up the diagram. Okay, so if, if it's a finite filtration, then that stops at a finite stage. I get to my X uh, capital N, and that's the last stage that really is X. Okay, that means lifts to the cohomology of X. But if it's not finite filtration, then this is how I wanna correct it. And then the argument becomes a little bit more complicated. Okay, so, um, Maybe let me say this is also not the same as saying that this lifts to the inverse limit. There's some comparison to do with the inverse limit. And my, my point is when we don't have a finite filtration, things are a little bit more complicated. So what's part of the problem here? It's really this theorem due to Milner, though maybe a good place to read about it is in Hatcher's algebraic topology. I think this is three section 3F.8. If we look at some filtered space, of course, I mean filtered uh, CW complex, so this is going to be a cellular filtration. For a CW complex X, not necessarily the CW filtration, but it could be. Um, so I wanna take this cellular filtration and the claim is that there's a short exact sequence. And what does it look like? So I've got the cohomology of X, say in degree N, and it maps to the inverse limit of the nth degree cohomology of each of the pieces. Okay, and it turns out that's actually surjective. 
but it's not necessarily an isomorphism. And the issue is this correction term that's often called limb one. So there's this term limb one uh, coming from hn minus one of xk, and that's all I need. So it's a short exact sequence. Okay, so uh, maybe our cohomology is not just the inverse limit, but we can describe this term that, that is sort of the extra, right? This is like when you do the universal coefficient theorem and you say, oh, okay, but there's, um, I just want a hom or a tensor, but then there's this extra tor term. Um, and in fact, I will make that um, more precise in a moment, that relationship. But before I do that, let me say, this holds for any cohomology theory. So I've been writing things that look like singular cohomology, just kind of out of habit, but if you wanted to do K theory or, or something else, you can do that too. And Milner proved that as well. Okay, so uh, I said this, this limb one is kind of like our extra tor term just because this is a right derived functor. I'm not sure if people tend to put the arrow below when they just refer to limb one, maybe I won't. Um, but the point is that this is the right derived functor of the inverse limit, this is our R1. And let's describe it in, in detail, just like we would X or Tor. So given some diagram of R modules, I think you can probably do this in an abelian category, but I don't want to think too carefully about it right now. In fact, I'm almost sure that Weibull has this described in an abelian category. Um, I want to have this diagram of R modules. Now I'm sort of thinking about, let's not do that. I'm sort of thinking about, uh, like a filtered object, for example, but th this works for any diagram of this sort. What is this, a directed diagram or something like that? Uh, in any case, so I want to take this diagram and define a map from the product of all the A's back to itself. Maybe you all have seen this before, in which case you can speed through this part. Um, but in case you haven't, I'm gonna take a tuple of these A's. Uh, and what do you do? Well, you send it to, uh, at each spot, the thing you had before, and then you apply F to the thing uh, in the previous spot. Okay, so I have this whole tuple for all I. So I just think of this as, as sort of, you know, you take some tuple of elements in each spot and then you shift it down one using F and subtract what you got, okay? So of course the kernel of this is exactly the inverse limit, right? This is a subset of the product where um, the, the things are mapped to each other under the Fs. Okay, so that's, that's exactly that. And the co-kernel is this limb one thing. So that's our limb one AI. Okay, so another way of saying that is that actually we have uh, an exact sequence where we've got the inverse limit that maps to the product it's really this universal sort of construction. I could use that map delta, okay, and so this is the kernel, and then the co-kernel is this limb one. Okay, and so this is exact. I almost wanna call it a short exact sequence, but it's not quite short, right? Okay, but given a short exact sequence of these sorts of diagrams, so maybe I have uh, at each spot, a short exact sequence where A, I maps to B, I maps to C, I, and everything commutes, right? Oh, I was trying to say the I's, but not write them. 
Okay, there we go. Well, another way of saying this is that there's a long exact sequence, right? Whenever I have a right derived functor, I get a long exact sequence. So I've got the inverse limit of the a's maps to the inverse limit. Come on. Maybe I need to move this up. Uh, maps to the inverse limit of the b's. Whoops. Maps to the inverse limit of the c's. And the point is this is left exact, right? So I have a right derived functor. So that part's all exact, but that map, that last map wasn't surjective. Uh, but I can continue this sequence with the first right derived functor, and that's my limb one. By the way, in Boardman, uh, I think he calls this R limb or something, or, or just R A, something like that. Um, maybe R A infinity, actually. Let me not try to describe that while I'm still writing this because I'm struggling. Here we go. Okay, inverse limb one of ci. Okay, and now normally for a right to right functor, you would continue this sequence forever. There should be like, I don't know, the second right to right functor, maybe limb two or something. But Milner actually showed that that's, that's the end. So uh, you get this long exact sequence that's not so long, um, and you only need that first uh, right to right functor. So I'm saying that the higher right to right functors of the inverse limit turn out to be zero. Okay, great. So that was sort of a, a, a tangent into this limb one in case you haven't seen it before. But now let's come back to our issue with spectral sequences. Um, well, remember we had this condition where a filtration was called complete. A filtration of Hn was called complete if it was the inverse limit of Hn mod Fp Hn. Okay, so we take the whole thing and we mod by each of the filtered pieces and we take the inverse limit. And if that actually recovers our Hn, then the upshot here is that we don't have to worry about a limb one term. I'm not sure if people tend to write the arrow when they just refer to limb one. So, um, great. So that, that whole, the whole point of having a complete filtration is so we can avoid this extra kind of mess when we're computing cohomology. And now I kind of introduced this coming from the cohomology of spaces, but we'll run into the same issue when we deal with the cohomology of chain complexes. It's really something special about uh, the homology that we kind of get to ignore this sort of situation. So in general, we could have lim one terms and this complete condition is, is making sure that we don't have to deal with this. Um, Maybe let me say this also implies Hausdorff, so this depends on which definition you are using of complete. I think this one uh, does imply Hausdorff, but I'm being kind of a little bit lazy here with Boardman's definitions, so, so be careful with that. Um, notice, by the way, that if we had a finite filtration, then we get all these things that we wanted, so it's exhaustive. Remember that meant Hn was the union of all the filtered pieces. It's Hausdorff, which meant that if you intersect all the pieces, you get zero and it's complete. Well, that's the condition I've just written down that Hn is this inverse limit of the big thing, mod each of the filtered pieces, and um, and that means that we have no limb one term. Okay, so finally we can talk about convergence the way that Boardman does. So he says a cohomology spectral sequence with filtration
So we want to have these filtrations of each of our HNs, the usual setup. So for each HN, for each N, I suppose. Um, and we have some isomorphisms where we've identified our E infinity terms with the filtration quotients. Okay, remember um, that that Weibull would already say that spectral sequence, we say uh, weakly converges. Boardman says, if you want to say that this converges weakly, to Hn or H star, uh, if this only happens if the filtration is exhaustive. Okay, so that's an extra restriction from what Weibel said, but again, you, you basically never want to deal with something that's not exhaustive. So that's not a very strong condition to put on here. And so Boardman says converges weakly. Okay. If we just say converges, well, or someone following this terminology just says converges to HN, then what they mean is that the filtration was exhaustive so we had that union condition. I was trying to leave that on the page while we talk about these. Um, sorry, so this filtration is exhaustive. That's our union condition um, and Hausdorff. Okay, and then finally converges strongly Let me say 2HN. If the filtration is the best possible kind here. Filtration. So it should be exhaustive. Hausdorff. and complete. Okay, the way I've set it up, complete implies Hausdorff, but uh, again, even in the weaker version of complete, this we would want all three. And notice that this last one converges strongly. This is what Weibull says uh, is what we mean when we say converges, right? So um, why is that? Well, that's really coming from the classical situation, I think because this converges strongly is really the best situation. So strong convergence is the one that we would like. This is the best case. And what do I mean by that? Why is this the best case? Well, okay, it sounds like it has the best name, um, but of course it's not very mathematically precise. What's the point of this converges strongly condition well, if we have the filtration being exhaustive Hausdorff and complete, then we have the best hope of reconstructing Hn. So what do I mean by that? We need, um, let me say we only need to solve extension problems. to find Hn, right? We just, we know from the filtration quotients and we can just solve each extension problem uh, together and then take this inverse limit. And there's no lim one term. Remember this completeness is gonna tell us there's no lim one. So this is, this is the kind of convergence that really I've been talking about all term long, where we see that the E infinity term is an associated gradient for filtration of 
the thing that we're after, and we supposedly learn something about the thing we were trying to compute by solving these extension problems. Okay, so this will happen whenever we have a finite filtration, as we said before. Um, this will also happen if we have an exhaustive and bounded below filtration that in lower uh, filtrations is eventually zero. Okay, so that's gonna give us our Hausdorff condition and also complete automatically. And this is often what people um, refer to as classical convergence. Though I suspect that even that terminology varies, but what I mean by that is this is really the first kind of convergence we would want for a spectral sequence. We've got the best possible situation. We just solved these extension problems. There's no messy lim one terms. And, and not that it's easy to solve extension problems, but that, that will help us, or that's all we need to do to reconstruct our HN. But now as people have used spectral sequences more and more and gone into different kinds, um, we saw that you know, maybe we have something that, uh, we could have something that's not complete. We could have something that's not um, only a half plane or bounded below kind of spectral sequence. Maybe we have something that doesn't even have bounded filtrations. Uh, we could have something where the entire page is full. Okay, so in those cases, you may not get strong convergence, but maybe you can still say something about the result. And so a lot of spectral sequence arguments today involve those sorts of situations where you don't have, have the best kind of situation, but maybe you can still reconstruct your answer up to some, something indeterminate or, or something like that. Um, there's also in Boardman something called conditional convergence, which is an even weaker version. So there's, there's still a lot to investigate here. And also, uh, besides just investigating all these different types of convergence, we'd like to know about the spectral sequences we've seen, what kind of convergence they have. So uh, we will continue that uh, all in the future.